Hey folks, so in this video today we're going to go over some of the reasons why we get saddle discomfort. And of course, just like anything in bike fitting, there's a bunch of reasons why this could occur, but we'll go over the main ones that I see quite a lot here. So I'm going to hop up on this bike. And again, this is not my bike. This is just one I had laying around. So of course it's not going to fit, but it's just for demonstration purposes, of course. All right. So the, f the first thing I want to get across is that many people come in with saddle discomfort and they immediately assume they need a new saddle. And in my experience, this is actually rarely the case. I shouldn't say rarely, but it's not often the case. Um, and so you really need to be cautious about making sure that you've tackled all the other problems before you start investing in, in saddles because they can get expensive pretty quickly. Uh, the number one cause for saddle discomfort on the bike has to do with your handlebar position. If your handlebars aren't in the right position, it's going to draw you off the saddle and off the wider portion of the saddle in back. What the most common scenario is when somebody's handlebars are either a little too long or a little too low for them. And what that's going to do is it draws, actually draws their hips forward on the saddle a little bit, or it tilts the pelvis it actually tilts that pelvis forward to make up that distance so they can reach the handlebars a little easier. And of course, this is an exaggeration, but it doesn't take much to get that tilt wrong. Uh, we have a, an angle where our pelvis is gonna be most stable on the bike, and we really wanna match that pelvic angle with our handlebar position. Those two things have to go together. So addressing handlebar reach and drop is one of the first places I would start. Um, secondly, the, most com the next most common thing I see is when somebody does not have the right amount of weight on their feet. We have to have a good balance between hands, hips, and feet. The feet in particular, if they're not taking the correct amount of weight, then that's gonna throw a lot of weight onto the saddle. There's something that we, I always call it Newton's third law of motion for cycling, okay? And what it has to do with is, has to do with the relationship between our hips and our feet. When our hips, um, our hips are behind, and, and specifically how much our hips are behind our feet during the power phase, okay? Um, because in the power phase from 12 o'clock up here all the way down to five or six o'clock, okay? This, this whole part of the pedal stroke. Our feet are, of course, below our hips, as they are all the time, but they're also in front of our hips. Okay, so Newton's third law of motion is equal and opposite reaction, right? So when we're pushing against the pedals, the pedals are pushing back against us, okay? Since the pedals are below us, that's pushing us and our body up, and it's lifting us up off the saddle slightly with each pedal stroke, and that's good. We get unweighting from the saddle. Additionally, though, because the feet are in front of us, during that portion of the phase, we're also getting a force against us, pushing us back or posteriorly on the bike. And this has a, has a huge effect on the pelvic position. It can, it can keep that pelvic angle and allow us to stay there in that, in that correct angle so that we're not rolling forward. The common scenario is hips get a little too far forward and they're more on top of the feet and we lose that distance that they are behind. We lose that posterior force. That's being, that's being put through the, through the hips. So we really need to make sure we address, in order to get the proper weight through the feet, we would need to address that hip to foot position that way. Um, and I don't wanna discount you know, the, the importance of making sure that you do have the correct saddle underneath you. Um, of course, anatomically, people will fit saddles differently, uh, but I don't think it's generally should be the first thing we look at. Um, once you've exhausted these other bike fit things, and of course there are many others, but once you've done that, then certainly there will be saddles that will, that will mesh better with how you ride, what your fitness is like, what your mechanics are like, etc. cetera. Um, and the best way to go about that as far as how to find that right saddle anatomically um, is a lot simpler than you think. There's, I know there's, there's devices out there that you can sit on and it measures your sit bone width and that sounds great, um, but in my experience, it actually rarely works. And the reason is, is they call these assometers. And the reason these things don't work very often is because they've standardized 
the testing position. So you literally get yourself into a certain forward lean and you, sometimes you put your, usually you put your feet up a little bit and then they have you take an impression of your sit bones on, the, on this gel pad and then they measure the sit bone width. Um, the problem with that is, is everybody has a different angle that their pelvis rests at. And so we can't rely on the fact that this is gonna measure the right distance. Um, why, does the, why does the angle affect the, the width of the saddle we're choosing? Primarily because, the biggest thing is because our pelvis, we actually don't sit on our sit bones. Okay, our sit bones, as you can see, are way to the back here, and only when you're sitting very upright do we rest on the sit bones. We actually sit here on these, on the ischial rami and then the pubic rami in more aggressive positions. And you, as you notice, these angle in towards the midline of the body. So the further you tip forward, the narrower the bones that you're sitting on are. So the, the more you tip the pelvis forward, the more aggressive position you're in, the narrower those bones are that you're sitting on. So that's what we need to make sure is customized. The best way to go about making sure that you get the right saddle is once you've done all these other things is truly to simply just try other saddles. In general, the advice I give to people when they're selecting a saddle has a few steps to it. The way it starts off is uh, a saddle when it's positioned um, in almost all circumstances should be mostly level, okay? If it's not level, then you're not able to really have a good balanced pelvis on that saddle. The most common scenario is people will tilt their saddles down and having the saddle nose down creates all sorts of problems because then the pelvis isn't stable, it's gonna roll forward, you're gonna be placing more weight on your hands, and generally you're gonna slide into the middle of the saddle here where there's gonna be more pressure and you're gonna be, be bearing more weight onto the middle of the saddle. Too much, and the second rule of first saddles is too much cushioning can be just as bad as, as too little. So more cushioning is not always better. Um, in the same way that with handlebar position, more height or a shorter reach isn't always better. The higher those handlebars get and the shorter reach they get, the more we're tipping back onto our wider portion of our sit bones and, uh, and the more pressure we're placing on the saddle. The third rule for saddles is it's usually a good bet to, to try something that has some flat sitting surface. Many saddles that are uh, over sloped or over tapered have very aggressive profiles to them. Um, sometimes are more difficult for people on average, when we're talking about the whole population, to find a comfortable spot on. But if you find one that's got a little bit of flat sitting surface, a lot of times those, we can find a couple of different spots where they're comfortable. Finally, the last is about cutouts. Cutouts are really common. Cutouts were really popular a little while back. They are not a cure-all though for, for these issues. Research has shown that uh, cutouts will decrease perineal pressure sometimes and in some people but by no means in everybody and so the success of them decreasing pressure on the saddle especially where the sensitive nerves are that that are important uh, is is has a fairly poor track record uh, it's actually the one the one um, the one variable that they've tested over and over that that cutouts will absolutely have an effect on is stability of the pelvis they will in that, unfortunately, they will, in almost all cases, decrease the stability of the pelvis. So we really need to be careful. If your problem with your saddle is already one of an instability, then going to a cutout may be the worst thing you could do. So, if you again, if you're going to try and find a saddle, try and borrow one, try and you know lease one. If you can find, there's often many good bike shops and uh, bike fit studios that have uh, saddle libraries like I do here, and you can check a saddle out for a few rides, test it out before you, uh, before you have to drop money on it. So take a look at all these things, make sure the handlebar's in the right position, make sure you're got, you've got enough weight on your feet, then test out some saddles, go through all this stuff, and uh, see what you can do. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I get my best ideas from you guys, so please uh, let me know about that, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.